In this tutorial today, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install uh, Backtrack Linux into a virtual machine. Uh, not necessarily referencing an ISO, but more so actually installing it on an actual virtual machine disk, uh, similar to that of a hard drive. It's basically like creating a partition on your, your system, but rather than actually partitioning the hard disk, you're just creating a uh, pre-allocated uh, file with the designated hard drive space. Uh, so that way you can make changes to it, uh, change themes, save files and so forth, and all that um, content will remain as is, as though you actually um, made changes physically to, on your hard disk rather than in memory. Now, um, th this can also be applied for any version of Linux, Windows as well. Um, I'm just, just going to use Backtrack as an example. Uh, I know there's a few tutorials already on YouTube on how to do this, but um, one of my YouTube friends, Valkamis, I believe it's pronounced, uh, asked that I do this, and since he provided a copy of my wireless hacking part 2 video in HD, um, ever since it was deleted by YouTube, I'll go ahead and do this for him. So uh, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to need two components. First one we're going to need is VMware Player. You can also use VMware Workstation, but VMware Player is free. And if you do a quick search for VMware Player 3, actually just uh, VMware Player rather, um, previously, the, the version 3 release, you couldn't actually in, um, create new virtual machines. You had to just use uh, pre-configured ones. With the new virtual ma or VMware Player 3, you can actually um, you can actually create virtual machines, what we're going to do here. And it's free as well. So a lot of you complain that you don't like filling out the registration information, so that's why we're Googling it rather than going to the exact website. If you do VMware Player in a Google search, you'll see File Hippo's release right here. You can just click on that. And you can straight up download the um, version right there. Now, I currently have a VMware Workstation installed on my system. And if I try to install VMware Player, it'll give me a, con a conflicting error and won't let me do it. I tried installing it on my XP partition just so it'll make it a little easier to follow along with. But um, there's some issue with that partition. So I just thought I'd screw it. I'll just do it on this. Um, the interface is pretty much the exact same thing, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Um, once you have VMware Player downloaded, you can uh, also, we're going to go to a website. We're just going to use Backtrack in this example. So I'm going to go Backtrack hyphen Linux, their new website. And uh, you can also use Ubuntu or XP, Windows, whatever. Um, just download an ISO file, the CD image. So at the backtracklinux.org site, we're going to go to Downloads. And we're going to get the Backtrack 4 final release. So we're going to just hit Download here and download the ISO file. Save it to my documents, whatever. So uh, once that's downloaded, we have those two uh, components. We can go ahead and install the VMware player. Once it's installed, we can go ahead and launch it. And like I said, I'm mean, going to use VMware Workstation, this, but the interface should be pretty much similar. And uh, it should come up here momentarily. OK, once we have VMware Workstation open or VMware player, you can uh, go ahead to click on New Virtual Machine or Create New Virtual Machine. And it should pop up a GUI interface here which is uh, step-by-step instructions. And uh, for this, we're going to uh, just select the custom option and hit next. After this, hardware compatibility, you can leave the default as is. It should be on 6.5 to 7 and hit next from that point. And uh, installer disk image, go ahead and reference wherever we save that backtrack ISO or Linux ISO, whichever. And I already have mine saved. I'll just use this backtrack 4 ISO here. So right now we're just going to reference the ISO file we downloaded and hit next. Guest operating system, if you're using a Windows virtual machine, it'll be Windows. But in this case, we're going to use Linux and we're going to select other Linux 2.6 kernel. Hit next. Uh, virtual machine name, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to name it, name it backtrack. Let's make this lowercase. Test. And it'll save it in this directory, which is where I save all my virtual machines. And I hit next. Number of processors, if you're running a dual core, select two. If you're running a quad core, select four. If you're not sure, be safe, select one. I'm running a dual core X2 AMD, so I'm going to select two. I'm going to leave the number of core per processors alone and hit next. As far as memory allocation, uh, my rule of thumb is generally for virtual machines I use frequently, I'll use uh, about 1.5 to 2 or I should say 25% to 50% of my current memory. I have 4 gigs in my host machine. So for this one, I'm just going to go up to 1024, which would be 1 gigabyte. So I have the rest um, allocated for my system, my host system. And that should be enough right there, uh, 1 gig. But basically a fourth of your current memory should suffice. And once that's allocated, hit next. As far as network connection, we're going to use the NAT connection. So we can hit next after that. Um, I/O input output adapter types. Leave that as uh, as current default. 
So in this is going to be a SCSI LSI logic, which is recommended. Hit next. And at this point, we want to select the option to create a new virtual disk. And this, like I said, this will create that uh, file that's basically um, a reenactment of a partition. It's a single file with a pre-allocated space. So we can go and select that. Next. Leave it at SCSI, which is recommended. Hit next. Uh, ma maximum disk size. You're going to want anything above 4, 6 to 20 or even more. Um, I use A in this, but if you try using too low of an amount, you won't be able to actually install the operating system. So eight's a, 8 gigabytes is a good minimum size. Um, for my primary backtrack for a uh, virtual machine, I use about 20 gigabytes. Um, you're, you can use 100 gigabytes. You can use as much as you want. Just make sure you have enough disk space on your host machine to um, make room for that. I'm pretty sure I have, uh, yeah, I have plenty of room here, so I'll be fine. So uh, at this point, I'm going to leave this at 8, leave it at its default. Um, this option I, I strongly suggest doing to allocate all disk space now. Um, basically what this will do is if you leave this unchecked, it'll create the file. The file size will uh, be dynamic. It'll grow as you install components to the operating system. So uh, it'll, it'll be able to create the v, a VMDK a little faster, but um, it'll just, the performance will be a little slower because it has to um, enhance the, or grow the file size as uh, data is accumulated and content is installed. This, if you allocate all that space, it already it'll just create a pre-designated file with the maximum file size. Go ahead and select that. I'm not just so I can get this a little faster. So uh, we're gonna make sure also store, store virtual disk as a single file is selected, and hit next. Uh, disk file. This is the one I was referring to earlier. Just leave it as is and hit next. Next. Um, customized hardware you probably shouldn't have to do. Everything should be configured as. Needed. Okay, cool. And power on this virtual machine after creation. Go ahead and leave that checked and hit finish. At this point, you're pretty much done as far as creating the VMDK. Only thing to do now is just perform the actual installation of the operating system. So at this point, I can just hit enter. It's going to start up everything. It's going to take some time. Uh, Linux is kind of slow at starting up sometimes. And also in this in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to uh, change resolution on Backtrack. Some people have tr problems with that. I'm also going to show you how to install VMware tools. Um, VMware tools makes mouse movements a little easier. Makes it feel more as though you're on a host machine rather than a virtual machine. There's a, a lot of different things it does. So I'll go and show you how to do that as well. And I'll also show how to give yourself admin since that'll come, a little, that'll come in handy if you're installing to a VMDK. So let's go and wait for this to continue and then we'll um, go on from there. At this point, we see the backtrack has finished loading up, and we'll, we're left at a command line. So in order to launch the desktop, we'll type in start x and hit enter. And then I'll load the x desktop here. And as you can see, um, right now my uh, host uh, resolution is 1920 by 1280, I believe, on my primary monitor. So um, the default resolution for backtrack is fairly small, and it's not going to look appropriate. So we're going to go ahead and change that a little bit. But first thing I'm going to do, the nice thing about backtrack 4 is the installation itself is pretty much automated. So we can just double click on this install uh, or install.sh. I don't even think we have to double click on it. Let's see. But anyways, this will be a shell script that will perform the installation for us. We'll, we're presented with the GUI interface that will basically um, reenact the wizard, take a step-by-step -step, um, language crash. That's common. We'll just continue anyways. Okay, so we're here. We can select the city we're in for time zone purposes. I'm just going to leave it as default for now because I don't care. Go with forward. And then we can select our region. We can leave, pr proceed from there. And it's going to set the partitioner. Um, for those advanced users that are familiar with Linux, uh, you can go with manual, so you can create like a boot partition. You can pre or determine your swap file size. But for most people, if you're not sure about all that, just go with the guided installation. You don't have to worry about swap file size and everything. It'll do it all for you. Just hit forward, and basically, it's going to be partitioning that VMDK file we created earlier. What's your name? I'm just going to enter in my generic alias, which will be Mushroom Headbangers. It will already create a username for us, which will be all lowercase by default. Password, I'm just going to make leet. Leet. What is the name of this computer? I'm just going to name it Leet's PC. You can name this whatever you want. I mean, this basically is just your login name. So whenever you have to log into the system, you can just enter your username and password. Let's click login automatically and then click forward.